Good morning, church. Why don't you stand with me? Let's worship God. Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done here in us. Jesus, there is no one great. Savior, show the world your love. Oh, sing this out. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come down. Let your glory we pray we're going to read some scripture when we're done we're going to worship God a lot and hear from his word today father it is good to be in your house it's good to celebrate with your people just how truly wonderful you are father as we're here as we're singing and, and worshiping as we're hearing from the word let us hear your voice oh so clear just like it would just be a, a clarion sound in our ears Lord God that there would be no doubt what you would have us do next we bless you, we bless you, we bless you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. We're going to read a few verses from Psalm chapter 40. Uh, just the first four, four, and I want you to read them with me, all right? Read them aloud with me. Uh, so we'll skip the director of music part. Oh, there. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Now, can we just pause and collectively say amen? 
Thank you, Lord, I'm not there anymore. Verse 3, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. All right, two things I want to say about this. Okay, again, are you not happy that you're not in the muck and the mire, the slimy pit today, but just test and see the ground is firm beneath your feet? Well, here at the Cornerstone, absolutely it is. We're on a solid ground here. Uh, that, that verse 3, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to my God. Well, this next part, many will see and hear or many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Why do you think they're seeing and fearing God? It's because we're so amazing, because God has done good things in us. So pat yourselves on the back and say, thank you, Jesus, that you helped me make a decision for you. It's so good to be on the inside of what the Lord is doing. God, let somebody else see how good you are through me this week. Oh, praise God. What a fellowship. What a joy divine I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Yes, I'm leaning, I am leaning, I am safe and secure.
because a lot of you are shorter than all these, these big, tall adults, but we're going to send you off to Power Kids, and uh, Courtney's got a lot of fun planned for you. Snacks, they do snacks at Power Kids. All right, oh, we'll see you guys at the end of the service. God bless you. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, all my life. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God I'll sing this out all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able who oh, i will sing of the goodness of god your is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me I'll sing that one more time your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. 
Jesus. Come on, church, let's lift up our voice and just thank the Lord for all his goodness, all of his faithfulness. Oh, Lord, you never stop. You never hold back. you, Lord. Oh, there's nothing like serving Jesus. Nothing like serving you, Lord. Mighty God.
Why would we hold anything back from you? Lord, all of our lives, all of our stuff, all of our passions and dreams, we, we give everything to you, Jesus. How, how, how amazing it is that we are found in you today, that our lives have been bought with your shed blood, that our sins have all been washed away, that we pray you hear our prayers and respond, that you said that we could give you every problem and you would shoulder every burden. How good is it that you're preparing a home that we can live with you forever and ever? Mighty God, we give you today. We, we pause just for a moment to send all of our, our worries and our fears, our burdens, our heavy loads. We push them in your direction. And we ask you, God, for, for miracles. Some of us are looking for miracles because, God, we don't quite know what to do next. So, Lord, look after us. Pour out your spirit in our hearts. Pull us closer to you, God. Turn our mindset from fear into praise. From despair into joy. Father, we give you everything. Lord, there's a number of folks in our church who are sick this week. Uh, they, a number have, have COVID. A number have colds and runny noses and all the rest. Lord Jesus. There's some with very, illness, ser very serious illnesses, and we ask you, God, to bring strength and healing and joy all around our church. God, we pray that people would feel, even now as we're singing, that they would feel strength in their bodies and know that Almighty God is lifting them up right now. And Father, for those in our neighborhoods, in our families, Lord, those around our area who are are just a little farther away from you, Lord. I pray, Lord, you'd hear their prayers as well and you'd meet their needs. Those who are sick, would you heal them? Lord, use that to bring them closer to you, Jesus, that you'd set them free from, 
from the, the despair of the world. Plant the joy of the Lord deep in their hearts like you do ours. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Join with me, church, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Look at someone today. Give them a great big smile. You can high five them, fist bump, hug, whatever you'd like. It's good to be in church with you. Good that the family is together on Sunday morning. God bless you. All right. Well, welcome again. Welcome again to the Cornerstone. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that uh, you woke up this morning, you put the coffee on, you got all spiffed up and dressed up and came to church and uh, ready to worship God. It's good to be here. I love being here on Sunday mornings with all of you. And I look around and I see we've got, seriously, we've got a lot of people in our church who have colds and are not feeling well, some with uh, COVID and continue to pray for our brothers and sisters all week long and trust God to strengthen them and to do a good thing in them. All right, we've got some ushers ready to come along to receive our tithes and our offerings. Uh, you can give it here in church. You can drop it off through the week, send it in on e-transfer, whatever is easiest for you. A uh, couple of announcements before we get into God's Word. Things are, it, it's like things are back in full swing. Everybody is back from summer holidays. The kids have resigned themselves to the fact that school is here and it's going to last, oh gosh, nine more months. And uh, yeah, so it's back into the swing of things. Kids are going on Wednesday nights. Uh, Friday night is youth. Uh, Bible study, Thursday nights at 7. I think this is week number, are we, week number 4, looking at the book of Psalms and how the Psalms can help you in your, your devotional time, your walk with Jesus, how they will encourage you and pull you back in God's direction every single time. Men's prayer Tuesday morning on Zoom and the prayer room for everybody is Sunday nights and that's on Zoom as well. Well, all these links, everything, reminders and all that is in your email, which comes out Sunday afternoon. If you don't get our church's email, uh, you can sign up yourself on our website. Go right to the bottom and there's a spot where, where you can put in your email address. Or, or just talk to me or, or Evelyn. We'll see that you get added and that you stay in the loop. Because we've got a couple big events coming up at uh, the end of the month. On October 28th, uh, guys, you, you know what I'm talking about. We've been talking about this. Making Mighty Men Conference is back again with a couple of my good friends, Billy Richards and Chuck Price. And uh, we're looking for a great Saturday on October the 28th. Uh, and then on the 31st, we're all dressing up and going out for Halloween. Okay, just me and Bruce, fantastic. But no, the whole church, we're going door to door. We've been doing this. Bruce, how many years have we been doing this for? 20 years going door to door, knocking on every door, and collecting uh, for our food bank here in Gananoque, which was started by the churches. And uh, this is so much fun. Do you know the most memorable food drive? I, I think this will be my... We lost one over COVID. This will be my fifth one, I think. The best one was the time it rained, poured the entire time. All the food got wet, but didn't matter. I was soaked. My boots had more water than feet in them. But we had the most fantastic time, and I didn't have to shake a shower for two weeks after. It was fantastic. So look, put that on your calendar. Guys, October 28th, book the day out. We're going to have a good time. October 31st, you just need to book the evening. I think we're meeting down at the Kinsman parking lot there by link later. Uh, Five-ish, and then we'll go out around 536. All right. All right. I think we're good to go. I think that's our announcements. I say it every week. I forget one thing. I heard the ladies had a great time yesterday uh, with uh, Elizabeth Sacre from uh, the Mia Center, which used to be the Pregnancy Care Center in Kingston. I love that. I love that you've picked or uh, chosen um, a, a target for the life offerings and for your focus for uh, something really local and close to us, uh, near and dear. I've known Elizabeth for a long time. And... Uh, Oh, she's a fantastic woman of God. All right, if you have your Bible with you, you can get your finger into 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're in the middle of a series. 
I'm trying to do the math in my head. This has got to be week. Do you know it's October already? Isn't that ridiculous? It's October 1st. So this must be the fourth week of this series called Something Special. That's a good old maritime phrase, something special. We don't say something special because we're moving too fast in the maritime. So we've got to cut out a syllable or two. Something special. God is calling you and me to be something special. He's not calling us to be dour grumps. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says uh, that you need to walk around with a frown on your face with a dark cloud following you everywhere. But in Jesus, we can be truly remarkable people. It doesn't matter. I, I know. Well, it does matter. But it doesn't matter like our circumstances and the bad news that comes up. The bad news stinks. But in Jesus, we're able to rise above bad news and deal with it a whole lot differently than everybody else out there. Are you glad today that you know Jesus and that when you go through trials and difficulties, you are not facing it alone? There's that, that song, that gospel song we used to sing. You know, he's as close as the mention of his name. You, you speak the word Jesus and immediately your circumstances or, or the way you perceive your circumstances begins to change. It could be rough. It could be tough. It could be storming all around you. But in Jesus' name, things can be a little bit different. And for lots of times it can be a whole lot different as we trust in him and, and find Oh, there's got to be somebody, yeah, knows, knows what I'm talking about here today. Just nod your head really big. God has been good to me. I don't know how I got through that period in my life. Something happened, and my goodness, the Lord showed up and really showed me that he could do something, uh, something special in me. So last week, last week, I've been thinking about last Sunday all week long. We were praying for the glory of God to flow in us. Now, just like Moses standing on Mount Sinai, that we would receive more and more. More and more from the Lord. I've had a couple of interesting emails, texts this, uh, this week just about that. And people telling me, I'm seeking this. I'm looking for more uh, from Jesus. We can never have enough. Because as soon as we, we get some, we get distracted by something foolish happening. You know, some foolish worldly thing and some foolish happening in culture or whatever. We get distracted and we take our eyes off of Jesus. But in Jesus, I can do all things yeah, through Christ who strengthens me. I can't do all things. On my own, but I can, I can do a lot of things, but I can only do all things through, through Jesus. So today I want to talk to you about, uh, <laughs> I want to talk to you about being enthusiastic. So, so help me out. I, I want you to be enthusiastic to receive the word this morning. So put a big a smile on your face. Help me out here. Big smile, like a big goofy smile. Uh, that was, Bruce, that's a scary smile. Let's make it a like, go enthusiastic. I'm ready to receive the word of God. I want to hear what Jesus has for me because God has called us to be enthusiastic, I believe, about all that we are doing, even the silly stuff, even the stupid stuff, even the stuff that none of us wants to go through. The, like the God wants us to be enthusiastic when we're doing our income taxes. God wants us to be enthusiastic when we read the newspaper and we're not happy with the way things are going in some part of our country. God wants us to be enthusiastic when your kid brings home a test that's not quite what you thought they should be able to get. God wants you to be enthusiastic and positive and joy-filled when everything else in life is saying, no, you should turn uh, that smile upside, you know, turn that we say turn the frown upside down. Uh, no, no. Everything in life seems to want to put the frown back on our face. We start grimacing and gritting our teeth. But in Jesus, we can approach every problem just a little bit differently. All right. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, grade nine, I got my first paying job. Now, now, kids now, they're getting jobs like in grade 7 and 8. I can't believe that. I think uh, there's way too many video games that need to be played to be working in grade 7 and 8. In grade 9, I got a job delivering the Halifax Chronicle Herald. I woke up every morning at 5.30 in the morning. Not because I wanted to, but because I had to. I'd get my Sony Walkman, my Walkman, or my tape player, I would put it on my belt. And remember the Sony Walkmans, they were yellow? They were, you were so cool if you had a Sony Walkman. And the, even the headphones were yellow, and they, they went up, and then they went over your head because they didn't do earbuds back then, and they certainly didn't do AirPods. Man, old tech alert at church this morning. I'd put on my Sony Walkman, and I'd put in my favorite cassette tape. 
It might have been Petra. <laughs> I love Petra. My mom hated Petra. Petra was like a Christian rock band, because, but Christian rock in my family was like the devil music. Uh, so I, I listened to it secretly. That was my rebellion. That was the extent of the bad things that I did was listen to Petra and White Cross. And oh, I, love, I love that stuff. Anyway, anyway, I'd get up 5.30. I'd be out the door 5.45. I built that route up. I, I delivered it for four years, grade 9, 10, 11, and 12. When I graduated high school, I was way too embarrassed to deliver papers. But I built the route up. I had 220 papers. I was delivering every single morning. The Halifax Chronicle, Herald. it was a substantial paper. And then on Fridays, when they put all the flyers in, I was breaking my back. It's only Jesus that saw me through that. Jesus and my dad, because my dad would wake me up when I didn't want to wake up, kick me out of the house. I had papers delivered to three different locations because I'd fill up my bag and go to the next one, go to the next one. I had apartment buildings that I did that were near our house, and I, I would go and, and try and sign up new subscribers because I got 10 bucks for every new person. And uh, Yeah, I did pretty good. I did pretty good. But I did not do my paper route enthusiastically at all. I hated doing papers. I hated delivering them. I wish that you could do what they did on TV and like TV shows where they would be riding down the street on their bike and just whip the paper. I tried to do that, but I never landed it on the sidewalk. I'd always get in trouble when I did it. They'd get wet or in the rain or something. I was not enthusiastic. I grumbled the entire time. I was delivering papers. What a uh, horrible attitude. I loved on Friday afternoons when I would go collecting. And I had to, they didn't do telephone banking back then. Who would have thought? I'd have to go knock on the door and ask them for their five and a quarter a week or whatever it was. And some people were jerks and liked to stiff you for the money. And uh, I'm not praying for those people anymore. But I distinctly remember having a horrible attitude every morning. I, I liked the money. I, I don't know what I made a week, two or 250 bucks a week maybe delivering papers. Not a ton of money, but enough to keep me at McDonald's almost every day for lunch. But I, I had a horrible attitude. Uh, it was always too rainy or it was too sunny <laughs> or it wasn't sunny enough because it was so early in the morning. Uh, people's driveways were long or their dogs would bark or the have papers were too heavy. There was never a positive, ever a positive about the newspaper. For four years, I walked around a cloud of negativity complaining and, and, and just uh, grimacing before the Lord every day about that. Yeah, we're going to talk about how not to do that because I think it is so easy to slip into that in our work lives that I can, I can have a horrible attitude about a lot of things. In Jesus, he's calling us to live a little bit different. Everybody in our workplaces, uh, well, except for my workplace because everybody in my workplace is always in good, idea, good attitudes, but everybody in our workplaces has like grumps and complaints and things that they're worried about. I'm not paid enough. My hours aren't good enough or my desk is too close to the door. It's too close to the bathroom or my desk isn't close enough to the bathroom, know, depending on your health condition. Folks, there's two different kinds of people. Two different kinds of people. Number one, uh, people that let their environment determine their enthusiasm. Those are the people we do not want to be. We want to be the second kind of people whose enthusiasm are changing their environment. So when we walk into a room, and we've talked about this earlier in the series, when I walk into the room, the room should become better. Because I am a man of God, or you're a man, or a woman, or a young woman of God, and you walk into the room full of the Holy Ghost and power, full of joy, full of vigor in the Lord, walking in the grace of everything God has given you, and you can literally change the tone and the tenor of that room just because you have been there. If Jesus lives in us and he plants his spirit in our heart, then everywhere we walk is holy ground. Amen? Everywhere my foot touches is holy ground because Jesus has been to that place. Do you know, I don't think anybody, and uh, nobody here got saved because somebody argued them to faith. <laughs> they had a better argument, and I trashed your whole worldly argument, and oh man, I have to get saved because you argued me into the family of God. The reason why most people get saved is because... Not that they were convinced, but because it was so compelling what they saw in somebody else. I can't believe it. I can't believe how good you seem to be. Your life isn't really going really, really well. You've got all these negative things and all these bad things happening to you. But how do you keep a smile on your face? How are you so positive? Why don't you complain? You should be complaining. 
The word in enthusias, enthusiasm, it comes from, originally from a, a Latin word before that. It was a Greek word, uh, Greek phrase, entheos, in God. In, in, and, and theos is God. If we are in God or if we are filled with God, we shouldn't help but be enthusiastic in all that we do. There should be a smile on our face. There's no, no room for grumpiness, no room for gloominess. When we are in God, we are filled with God, and we are full of the full measure of all that God is. Last week, praying for the glory of God. Pray that over your life every day before you leave your house, before you hit the car and commute into work. God, I need a little more of you to cancel out some of the stuff that the world has been doing to me. God, give me more of your glory, more of your spirit, more of your power. I want to be just like you. All right, 1 Corinthians 15. I said we'd get there. We're finally there now. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God because he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you walk in victory and the moment we realize that we have the victory already, our whole day should change. Now, last night, I was not impressed when the Blue Jays lost. It, it was not great. I wasn't thinking it was a great idea. I was excited when the other team lost as well, so that meant the Blue Jays squeaked into the playoffs, and I was pretty happy about that. And I'll coast on that until they lose in the first round of the playoffs, but I know, negative. But when you walk in victory, it changes your whole perspective, your outlook on life. It changes the way you approach everything. You're not down in the dumps. I've got the victory. You're not worried because I've got the victory. You're not freaking out about things because I've got the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Or in the New Living Bible, I like how it says this because it uses the enthusiastic word. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So brothers and sisters, stand firm. Like, like we can. There, there, there's the assumption that you can stand firm, that your faith and your trust in Jesus, all that Jesus has given you will hold you firm no matter what storm is coming and, and knocking you over. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. And you can make the list in your head right now of all the things that tend to move me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the drive through Yeah, yeah. Having to get up early. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, people leaving, you know, drink cups in my car, even though I'd leave drink cups in my car. But no, other people are leaving them. Yeah, okay, okay. Stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of, of the Lord. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. When we go to work tomorrow, those of us who aren't retired yet, the rest of you, well, just pat yourself on the back for 40 years, job well done. You go to work tomorrow, you can work and work hard. You can do your whole thing. It doesn't matter how rude like the, the person at the next desk is. It doesn't matter what the customer says. It doesn't matter how low your paycheck is. You can work hard for Jesus because you know that Jesus has given you the victory already. What in the world have I got to complain about knowing that Jesus has already given me victory? My team has already won. I'm already on top. I read the last page of the Bible and we, we win. Trust me, check it out for yourself. We win. Jesus is coming back and we will rule and reign with him forever and ever and ever. We, we win. Nothing we do is going to be done in vain. And so we're able to work for Jesus. There's, there's a verse there in Colossians chapter 3 that says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart because you're working for the Lord and not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It is the Lord Jesus Christ you are serving. Every job. You can think about the things that you really don't like to do at your job. Or maybe the things you really don't like to do at your home. Maybe you're the person that gets called every time the toilet's plugged. I don't want to deal with the toilet being plugged. But that might be your job. You can go into the bathroom with the plunger and you can deal with that job. And you can have a smile on your face because you know that Jesus is doing good things in you. He's giving you the victory. This problem is not so big in Jesus' name. And I will, oh, I love that line. You will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. For anybody, anybody that thinks that they are not paid enough in their job, read this verse because Jesus has given you everything. 
Lord, I never seem to have enough. Lord, I never seem like, like my pay is, like I'm not making as much as so-and-so is. And they just promoted somebody over me, Lord. And they, that gives us reason to grumble. But in Jesus, we know that we're, I mean, that's worldly money. That's money that's not going to stand the test of time. It's not going to last forever. In Jesus, I have everything already. I've got the best retirement policy ever. Yeah, work that I don't like to do, work that I don't want to do, stuff that normally I would grumble about. I don't need to grumble anymore because Jesus has said, I've given you the victory. You can trust in me. You've got everything that you need. Enthusiasm is not a product of your environment as much as it is a posture of your heart. You decide in your heart the way that you want to be. I love the story about Paul and Paul and Silas or Paul and Barnabas, they got locked up in prison for the night and they got put into chains or stocks. And, and in the middle of the night, they, they were still there praising God, celebrating how good God is. I don't, I think the prison probably back then was just about as prison is now. And they were able to sing and praise God. I don't know how they were praising God with their hands tied together. Maybe they were clapping with their elbows. I don't know. But they were worshiping God one way or another in prison. With enthusiasm, David was able to run out to battle to serve God. With, with apathy, David walked out onto his roof to receive comfort from Bathsheba. Uh, that didn't make any sense, but it was with enthusiasm that he was able to do just a little bit more. Uh, David stepped up to the giant, to Goliath, and everybody else was freaking out about the situation. This guy is so big and so bad and so tall, and he's saying such horrible things. And David says to, to, to Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear. You've got your javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And this day, it's not me going de to deliver Israel. It's not me with my stones and my sling. It's it's the Lord is going to deliver you into my hands. I'm going to strike you down. I'm going to cut off your head. Take that. What, what if we went to the giants in our lives, all those horrible things, we stared them dead in the eyes. Uh, maybe don't do this to the coworker at work and say, hey, the Lord has given me the victory over you in Jesus' name. What have I got to worry about? And then you use the line, today I'm going to strike you down and cut off your head. Don't say that to your coworkers. Just say it in your mind that the big situation, the big problem, the big thing that I'm worried about, it's nothing in Jesus' name. This very day, I'm going to give the carcasses of the, see, sometimes the Bible is written, I read these verses and I think, man, I'm so glad I serve this Savior because this Bible speaks to my life because that's exactly how I would talk over my enemies. I'm going to give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and then the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. What if I approach my problems that way? What if I stared down those giants that way with enthusiasm, with joy, with grace, with blessing in my heart, knowing that God is for me and that there is nothing the world can do to me? In Jesus' name, I've got the victory. Start your day tomorrow that way. When you're starting your car later in a few months when, oh, the cars are going to be cold in the morning, you scrape them off. and You're looking over at your neighbor with their heated garage and, People have heated driveways now. My goodness. Luxury. I don't have a heated driveway. Oh, maybe someday. But Lord, I can look at that driveway that needs to be shoveled. I can look at all that yard work that needs to be done. I can praise God because he's given me breath in my lungs. He's given me strength in my body. He said that he would look after me, protect me, preserve me, pick me up, hold me together, and I can go forward with him in Jesus' name. I can cut this grass in Jesus' name. David's enthusiasm came from the fact that he did things with God every single day. He trusted God for everything he needed. I mean, just a kid going after a lion and a bear. God delivered him. He walked with God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Worship with God daily. I, I love that, that story of him when they were bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. Like they, when they were taking it back from, from the enemy. Uh, I mean, that, that's a whole great lesson there. The enemy's trying to steal from us, and God's calling us to bring it back. And he's worshiping God, dancing and giving everything to Jesus, not holding back because he knew God was, was great. Do you ever notice you read the Word and you realize the Word of God is for you? You worship uh, here in church or you worship through the week and, and spending time with the Lord and you realize that God is, is for you, his presence is in your life. 
You pray, and, and God hears your prayer, and then he answers it. How blown away are you that God answers prayer? God gives you gifts, and you realize, I can use my gifts to bless somebody else. Then you go and do that, and that person is blessed and encouraged because you did great things in their life. Those of you that have the blessing of baking pies, use that for a ministry. Everybody loves a pie. Everybody, everybody, everybody loves a pie. Somebody asked me about tithing the other day, and because um, we, we, well, I should talk about it more often, but, but we encourage people, tithe 10% of everything you make. Give it to the Lord. Let Jesus have it. Well, I don't know if I can afford that. Well, you certainly can't afford it because God will fill in all the rest. You give God your first and your best, and he will fill in the rest. Trust God. You walk with him. You seek him. You serve him. You hear from him. And you find that every day I can be filled with God to overflowing. My cup never runs empty. I am never left wanting. It's always something from Jesus. As Goliath moved closer to attack, this is 1 Samuel 17, David ran out to meet him. Ran out. He didn't walk. He wasn't worried. He ran out quickly to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag, he took out a stone. He hurled it with his sling. Hit the Philistine right in the head. I, I've got it burned in my memory, the, the flannel graph picture of that uh, from when I was a kid because the stone actually went so far into his forehead in the picture. I mean, this, the, the, the people who did the, this artwork for Sunday school, they knew what I would like because uh, I would I thought that's awesome because the skin was coming out over the stone it went in so far I thought that was fantastic the stone the Bible says well the stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down to the ground God's got you every single day of the week God's got you God's got you covered God's looking after you God is hearing your prayers God is filling you with everything you need God is not holding back from you we're going to talk about generosity next week that God is calling us to be. Oh, I shouldn't have said that because now you probably won't come. But God wants to stir up generosity in all of us. That like we just go crazy giving stuff away. Giving our time, giving our money, giving our stuff, giving all that we've got away because we recognize that all of this is ultimately God's. Anyway, but I'm preaching next week's sermon already. With enthusiasm, David ran out to the battle to serve God. But then there's the flip side of the coin in David's life. We know also about David that with apathy, David walked out on the roof to serve his own comfort. And, and you, you shake your head at David because you see he's got these ups and downs and he's doing so well one moment and then not great the next. He took his eye off of his calling and set it into his own comfort that I'm going to do things a little easier, that I'm going to take the, the simpler path out of here. He took his eyes off his calling. Uh, there's that, that, you know, all those letters in the book of Revelation, one of them, uh, it says, you, you, you've forsaken the love. This, this church in Ephesus, you've forsaken the love you used to have. Consider just how far you've fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Like the way you felt when you first came to Jesus. Go back and do that thing. When everything was about Jesus and you were so passionate and so driven. I have to have this. I, I mean, because really, which one of us wants to live with, with like a grumpy face all the time? Who of us wants to be down in the dumps? Who of us wants to be uh, like, like just broken up and complaining and whining over everything? Who of us wants to be living impatiently all the time? I think we, we, we see in the scriptures that we can be delivered from these things and that there is the way that I used to be in Jesus that maybe, maybe God, you can help me put that smile on my face. I don't always feel like smiling, but God, I think you can put it there in Jesus' name. It's the only way it's going to happen. David cried out. He wrote Psalm 51. We're going to be talking about this, uh, I think, next week in our Psalms study on Thursday nights. He says, create in me a pure heart. Because I recognize that what's gotten in there, there's some things that have snuck in one way or another that they're just not of you, Jesus. Create in me a pure heart, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me, I love this line. Do you know what? Restore to me the, the joy of my salvation. See, that's, that's the way the Christian life, it's characterized by joy. 
everyday joy. And if, if you're having a hard time putting it together, take it to Jesus. Jesus, why am I not experiencing joy every single Why do I not experience joy at work? It might be because, oh, yeah, search me, search me, oh God. Find if there be some wicked way in me. There should be joy when I'm at work. Why is there no joy in my heart when I'm on the 401? I know that's a really joyless experience. But God, why is there no joy when I'm in traffic? Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Is there, uh, see if there be any wicked way in me. Why, why do I not have joy when I'm at home? Why don't I have joy in the morning or joy at night? How can I get more joy? Search me, O oh God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit loose in my life. Find if there possibly might be a wicked way. And I know looking out at you folks this morning. Like some of the wicked people stayed home today. I'm just joking. I didn't say that. Is this online? Oh, shoot, it is. You folks are fantastic. I, I get to pastor the most fantastic church north of the 401. I love it. Love it. But I know that each one of us have times when a little bit of the world creeps into our, into our everyday life. and We don't know how it got there or when it got there, but, but there's just, just that little thing in there, and it's crept in, and it's stayed, and we've entertained it, and we've encouraged it at times. Maybe we've enjoyed it. Maybe we don't know how we can live without it now. And, and Jesus, 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 like, restore to me the joy of your salvation. If your Christian life is causing you to be upset all the time, there's something wrong with your Christian life. If your Christian life is throwing you into wild, uh, uh, like, like, like just negative feelings, there's something wrong with your Christian life. Turn to Jesus. God, search me, oh God. Know me. Find out if there just be that one little thing. Uh, pull it out. It might be a really big thing too, but pull it out. Get it out of there. Let me know the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Oh man, that, like that, that's a prayer, isn't it? That, that's a big prayer. To give the Lord permission to search your heart. To open yourself up to the Holy Spirit and say, God, I'm willing to talk about anything. Lord, have, yeah, have your way in me. Have your way in me. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? You let Jesus in. Let him point out where, oh, Mike, you could do better in this area. Mike, just trust me in this area. Mike, don't worry. Mike, don't fret. Don't fear. Mike, Mike, Mike. The Lord does not call me Pastor Mike ever. It's just straight Mike. Oh, would you stand with me today? Let's pray. Trust God. You know, we're going to pray today. We're going to pray right now that God is going to restore to us the joy of our salvation so that so that later today when we're doing something that we don't like or tomorrow morning when we're going to work or you have to get up early or you have that chore to do or you have that thing when normally you'd grumble and normally you complain, we're going to pray today so that, oh, that'll just be covered over. We're going to pray that God would fill us to overflowing with his Holy Spirit. Lord, hold nothing back. Hold out your, your hands before the Lord. God, I come to you empty and broken and how I need to receive from you. Oh, would you join me in this posture? Let's just hold them out before the Lord today. Father, would you search our hearts? Would you search our hearts? Really, we have nothing. Our, our hands are empty. They're signifying that we've got nothing before you. Everything we have comes from Jesus. So Lord, give us patience. Give us joy. Give us peace and patience. Grow all the fruit of the Spirit in us. Lord, we don't want to go back to that old way of life. We want the new way. So that, Lord, when we are doing our thing this afternoon and going to work tomorrow, when we're struggling with our kids or whatever we find ourselves doing, Lord, that, that we'll have the biggest, goofiest smile on our faces. We're facing difficulty because we know that we have the victory in Jesus. Nothing can hold me back. I'm a child of the King. I walk with the Savior. He fills me with the Holy Ghost and power. What have I got to worry about? Father, I pray for my friends today that, that you would fill their lives to overflowing. 
Don't let them leave here today without getting what they need from you, Jesus. And Lord, as the world comes at them this week, as our enemy does his very best to pull them off track, help them to stand up in your power, in your authority, and to speak life to dark places. Father, I pray for each one, each one here today, each one joining us online. I pray in Jesus' name that we would be the most amazing people in eastern Ontario that there would be something so special happening in our hearts and our homes that it would be undeniable to lost people that, Jesus, you're moving in us. Oh, God. God, is it too big to ask that we would be able to solve our neighbor's problems because we are so full of joy? Is it too much to ask, Lord, that we could encourage someone because we are so at peace with the horribleness of the world around us? Lord, would it be so much to ask that we could be a blessing everywhere that we go, that there would just be a kind spirit that follows us. Lord, that as we walk into a room, that room would change in Jesus' name, that it would be lifted up out of the sinful place where it finds itself and would be given a glimpse of glory a glimpse of heaven, a glimpse of your kingdom. Father, fill each one today to overflowing. Don't let them leave here today lacking, but give them what they need. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Church, before you go, stand up straight. Okay, work out the kinks in your back. Put your shoulders back. Hold your head up high. You are a child of the Most High God. He has called you by name to do great things this week. You are walking in victory in everything that you do. God, nothing can hold you back. Nothing can hold you back. Go in grace and peace, full of the Holy Ghost and power. We'll see you soon, church. God bless you.